Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're at the local, um, I guess, auction car dealer lot, and they have this 2007 Chevy Equinox that doesn't want to crank. Again, what's the history? Auction cars are always fun, this one's no exception. So it only has 35,000 miles on it, which is unbelievable. This lot bought this car from the auction, drove fine, but then they found out that the frame, I think, was rotted out or something, so they wanted to return it back to the auction. However, they, they drove it there, and then the auction place told them, hey, this car doesn't start, we can't buy it from you as a running car. So that's, that's kind of suspicious. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, the shop owner here said the battery was completely dead. So they put in a new battery, the car doesn't crank. I tried auto ID, it failed. So I'm going to put in the VIN. Uh, that's not a good sign. That means there's no communication with the engine computer. Now, with auction cars, I've just learned, you know, if the fuses are easy to access, just grab a test light, do a preliminary check before, you know, digging in too far. So you're looking for fuses like ECM bat, TCM bat, you know, battery feeds to modules. So I did check, you know, all the fuses, just a quick run, test light to battery ground, just make sure, you know, if the fuse is hot and it, with the key on, both sides should be hot. And they all checked out except for this one right here. So this one's fine. And this one, one side's hot, one side is not. Okay. Interesting. So that fuse right there is blown. Which one is it? Go to our box, and it's going to be second one down is number 34. Number 34 is TCM bat, 15 amp. ECM bat, the fuse seems to be fine. Now, <laughs> you want to take notes and document everything because who knows, maybe they sabotage the car. We want conclusive evidence to say, you know, so the owner has some ammunition. Like, why did this, why is this car not starting now? He drove it there. What happened? Did they jump start it backwards or something? Nobody knows. Um, but now it's kind of in his hands and it's a beached whale. So I'm going to put that in the notes. Fuse number 34 is blown. I'm going to put in the VIN in here and see if we can talk to any of the modules and do a preliminary health report see what happens so after putting in the VIN the Think Tool Pros recognize it as the correct 2007 Chevy Equinox front wheel drive now does it have all wheel drive well it does have the all wheel drive it does have a drive shaft and a rear diff so, you're going to say with all-wheel drive, traction control, uh, I think so, it says the bill of track, I saw a warning in here, service tire monitor system, yep, there's the little stability track, service traction control, and you're looking for this little button here, so it does have traction control, stability track right there. We see no Prindle because the TCM fuse is blown. Yes. Okay, smart scan. Place your bets now. I can't talk to the ECM. Cannot talk to the TCM as expected. So I wonder why you couldn't auto ID the car. This is why you want to do a full health report. See what's online, see what's offline. We can just pop in a fuse. I mean, we could do a short to ground check. That's not hard to do. Obviously, it won't crank if it can't see, you know, the park neutral switch. That makes sense. But why couldn't it auto ID the vehicle? Let's let's push that health report button. And okay, report.
pre-repair. Open it up. Odometer, 2,082 miles. That's weird. Okay. Fuel pump relay control circuit. Lost communication with transmission control module. Fine. BCM, blah, blah, blah. Lost communication with radio. Lost communication with instrument cluster. Lost communication with, okay. EVCM, all kinds of voltage codes. So, all right. Let me pop in the, put a bright test light across this 15 amp fuse, make sure there's no short to ground. We'll replace the fuse and then clear all these codes out, see what happens. All right, so here we go. Key is off. I'm going to pull out this 15 amp fuse. And it is most certainly completely blown out. And install a bright test light across these two pins. What is up with this terminal tension here? Okay, so that's installed. Let's put it up to five amps. And turn the key back on. Worst case scenario, our test light's gonna light brightly. This is how you avoid wasting fuses. Look, our park indicator lit up. Will it crank? Okay. <laughs> hey, that's progress. Let's uh, clear out all the codes. There could be another blown fuse. So I'm gonna say clear DTCs. So we got it to crank. That was the initial customer complaint. Now, do they want it to run? I assume so. Again, auction cars, really good for honing in the diagnostic skills because you come across stuff that normally you wouldn't see. All right, so codes are cleared out. I popped in a spare 15 amp fuse from the spare slot. Let's try to crank it, see if that fuel pump code comes back. Key on. Oh, interesting. Reset it. Okay, is it a mobilizer problem now? Let's try one more time. I wonder why I was doing a short crank before. One more time. Okay, now it sounds like it's out of fuel or something. So, smart scan again. Watch the ECM. Yep, one code stored. Okay. Okay, now we have a P0230 fuel pump relay control circuit. So, that's it doesn't have any fuel pressure by the sounds of it. I want to try one thing here in our ECM. Is it storing the correct VIN? Module information. Calibration. Verification. VIN ID. Yes, that should be. Ooh. 6094500. Yes. So, what I want to do is just back out. Automatically search. See if you can read this VIN automatically now. Okay, it can. That's good. This is going to be our part two of the diagnosis. So we got it to crank by replacing this TCM bat fuse, so it makes perfect sense. And now we have a P0230 fuel pump circuit. All right, awesome. Do smart scan one more time for good luck. So 
<laughs> I was looking for the fuel pump relay. It's number 62. Fuel pump right there. It's a little guy. And I just, I touched it and <laughs> it's clicking. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it looks like poor contacts in there. Oh, they stuffed it in this way instead of this way. <laughs> Oh, this thing should fire right up. That's unbelievable. How about this one? I really think they should be in this way. Let's check all these other ones. Yep, that one's definitely correct. You can't you can't mess these up, I don't think. Okay. This thing should fire right up. This this is unbelievable. I would only charge one hour diag for this. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> that was awesome. One blown fuse and one relay. <laughs> that was installed 90 degrees out. The pins fit in, but they weren't making good contact with the actual terminals. That's pretty cool. Usually you can't put a relay in 90 degrees out. That's it. They're going to be super happy and uh, nice and quick one. So keep practicing. The only way to really learn in this field is to practice. Do it with your own hands. You can watch videos all day long, but until you get out there and start solving problems yourself, um, yeah. Learn by experience. Get your ass kicked. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Holy shit. I knew I smelled gas. Holy crap. It's, <laughs> it's gushing out. Maybe the fuel lines are blown or something. Wow. This thing is rot box. 35,000 miles. I guess if they sit... They rot. I see a little hose clamp action there. Yep. Yep, right in there. That's a problem.